This video is the first in a series of Cyberpunk Red System videos, and what better way to start off than to cover the absolute basics. In this video we're going to cover stat skills and skill checks for Cyberpunk Red, which is the basic information you need in order to perform basic action resolution in the game. In upcoming videos we're going to delve deeper into the system and talk about anything from how to use individual role abilities to combat netrunning and everything in between. If you're new to the channel I'm covering other games as well and not just Cyberpunk. Even if you aren't interested in all of the content on this channel and you're only interested in Cyberpunk, consider subscribing anyway to be notified of when I release new Cyberpunk content. Because the game is new I haven't had much opportunity to release much of it yet, but I intend to have Cyberpunk content being one of my primary types of content going forward. The character stats are their innate abilities in the game. These are the core character traits that most character features derive from. Even the individual skills that we'll go over in a moment are based on stats in order to be used to resolve actions. There are 10 primary stats which range from 1 to 8 where a higher number is better and these numbers can even go higher than 8 in some situations. The 10 stats are arranged into 4 groups. The mental group consists of intelligence, int, willpower, will, Cool and Empathy Emp. Int indicates how bright you are, but it's also used to determine cleverness, awareness, perception and your ability to learn. Will represents your determination and ability to face danger and stress, but also your courage and how well you can survive long-term privation. Cool represents your ability to impress and influence others, how well you get along with others and how you interact in social situations. Finally, EMP represents your ability to relate to and care for others, but it's also used to offset the effects of cyberpsychosis, which we'll talk about in another video. The combat group consists of technique, tech or reflexes, ref. Tech represents your ability to manipulate and understand tools or instruments. Ref represents your response time and coordination, such as your ability to aim, throw or juggle. It's an important stat in combat as well, since it affects your accuracy with ranged weapons. The fortune group contains only a single stat, luck, which can be used to tip the scales in your favor. This stat acts like a resource which can be used to improve individual die rolls. You can spend as many luck points as you have luck and they refresh at the beginning of each session. The physical group consists of body, dexterity, dex and movement, move. Body represents your size, toughness and ability to stay alive and conscious due to physical mass structure and other qualities. Dex represents your overall physical competence such as how well you can perform different athletic activities. It's also important in combat because it represents your accuracy with melee weapons and how well you can dodge attacks. Finally, move indicates how well and fast you can move. While stats indicate a character's natural abilities, skills represent their learned abilities. The higher your level is in a skill, the better you are at using it. Each skill is also tied to a stat which represents the natural ability associated with the skill's use. How well you end up being at performing a specific action depends on the sum of your natural talent, your stat, and your learned talent, your skill. This is called your skill base. It's possible to use skills without having learned them. This treats the skill as zero and only uses the stat when determining the skill base. There are a lot of skills in Cyberpunk Red and all of them are divided into nine skill categories. Awareness skills consist of concentration, conceal or reveal object, lip reading, perception and tracking. Body skills consist of athletics, contortionist, dance, endurance, resist, torture or drugs and stealth. Control skills consist of drive land vehicles, pilot air vehicle, pilot sea vehicle and riding. Education skills consist of accounting, animal handling, bureaucracy, business composition, criminology, cryptography, deduction, education, gamble, language, library search, local expert, science, tactics, wilderness survival. Regarding language in particular, you need to choose a specific language associated with that skill. For local expert, you need to choose a specific location whenever you increase the skill, and for science you need to choose a specific scientific topic, such as geology, physics or chemistry. Fighting skills consist of brawling, evasion, martial arts and melee weapon. As for martial arts, you need to choose specific forms, such as karate, judo or aikido. Performance skills consist of acting and play instrument. The latter requires that you specify which type of instrument you can play. 
Ranged weapon skills consist of archery, auto fire, handgun, heavy weapons and shoulder arms. Social skills consist of bribery, conversation, human perception, interrogation, persuasion, personal grooming, streetwise, trading as well as wardrobe and style. Technique skills consist of air vehicle tech, basic tech, cyber tech, demolitions, electronics or security tech, first aid, forgery, land vehicle tech, paint or draw or sculpt, paramedic, photography or film, pick lock, pick pocket, see vehicle tech and weapons tech. It can be tricky for a new GM to learn all the skills and what they do, so my recommendation is to focus primarily on the skills relevant to your players in the beginning and then you'll naturally become comfortable with more of them as you play. In order to determine whether your character succeeds at something they try to do, a skill check could be necessary. If the task is easy enough that failure is either very unlikely or inconsequential to the narrative, then you shouldn't need to do a skill check at all. A skill check is a brief interruption in the roleplay in order to resolve an action. It should be done when it becomes important to test the challenge and when success or failure has an impact on the narrative. A skill check can be resolved either against another character or against a specific situation. When the skill check is against the situation, the GM determines a difficulty value, a DV, which the skill check must reach or overcome. When it's against a character, it becomes contested, and the opposing character makes their own skill check in order to determine a DV. Either way, in order to perform the actual skill check, you roll a d10 and add your skill base to the result. Your goal is to roll as high as possible. It can be tricky for a new GM to determine an appropriate DV, but the book has an overview of different difficulty levels on page 129. This overview depicts simple actions as DV9, everyday actions as DV13, difficult actions as DV15, professional actions as DV17, heroic actions as DV21, incredible actions as DV24, and legendary actions as DV29. The GM should want to challenge their players, but every skill check doesn't have to be overly challenging. New characters with largely low rated skills should go up against more low DV challenges in order to feel useful and successful. More difficult challenges with higher DVs should be rare and intense and feel like they have a lot of dramatic impact. If players end up failing most of their skill checks because the GM only puts them up against harder challenges, then they could quickly lose interest in the game. Finding a good balance is a hard challenge in itself. When making a skill check, rolling a 10 on the d10 means that you've scored a critical success. This lets you roll another d10 and add a result to your first roll. In other words, the highest possible outcome of a roll can be 20, rolling 10 twice, added to your skill base. If you roll a 1 on a d10, you've scored a critical failure. Now you must roll another d10 and subtract the roll from the first one, meaning that the worst possible outcome of a roll is minus 9, rolling 1 followed by a 10. A critical success or a critical failure doesn't mean that you automatically succeed or fail at a skill check. It only provides a better opportunity for success or a risk for more substantial failure. A failed skill check can only be tried again if the character's chances of success have improved in some way. This means that you cannot simply try again and again and again until you roll well, but you must find a different approach entirely. For example, failing to pick a lock could let you try again if you find a more suitable lockpick. The skill check can also be modified by external conditions. For example, a simple skill check that would have required DV9 could be made more difficult by low visibility. This adds a modifier to the skill check which either increases or reduces the chance of success depending on whether or not the modifier is positive or negative. For example, low lighting conditions could cause a minus one modifier. Having slept uncomfortably the night before could cause a minus two modifier and uh, being blinded by darkness could cause a minus four modifier. The core book has a table on page 130 of negative modifier examples which can help you out when determining these modifiers. Positive modifiers generally come from gear, cyberware, roll abilities or drugs, but there are exceptions. Some skill checks could positively affect the use of a subsequent skill. This is called a complementary skill check. For example, a character could use an athletics check in order to wear down a lock in order to provide a plus one bonus to a subsequent pick lock check. Alternatively, a play instrument check could impress someone enough for you to have a plus one bonus to a subsequent conversation check. Another way to provide a positive modifier for a skill check is being cautious and choosing to complete a task in four times as long as normal. This would also give a plus one bonus to the check. 
Finally, we have the luck stat. Before you make the skill check, you can decide to dedicate portions of your luck in order to increase the roll by one for each point of luck that you expend. As mentioned before, this pool refreshes at the beginning of each session. There are many skills in the game to represent all manner of actions. If you come from Dinosaur Dragons or a more rules light system, the number of skills can seem intimidating at first. I personally think that some individual skills are a bit superfluous while other skills are missing entirely, but the good thing about this system is that it gives you the option to house rule new skills you feel are missing, change the nature of certain skills you feel don't do what you want them to do, or merge other skills together. It's your game, and you decide how to play it. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also make sure to check out my Patreon for more content as well as for playable previews of my sci-fi game Machineborn. Feel free to leave suggestions in the comments below of what kind of cyberpunk topics you want me to cover as well. The next cyberpunk related video will most likely be a lore video depicting the fall of America, but I may change my mind and do something else if you have any good ideas that I don't want to pause up on. Anyway, until next time.